Hello, my name is Alejandro, a Cloud Support Engineer here at the AWS office in Dallas. Today, I am going to show you how to connect to the web user interfaces hosted on Amazon EMR clusters. Let's get started. Let's walk through the various ways that you can connect to the web user interfaces hosted on Amazon Elastic MapReduce clusters. Log in to the AWS Management Console and navigate to the Amazon EMR Console. Then, select the cluster that you want to connect to. Now that we have our cluster details on screen, let's copy the public DNS name from here. We can use local port forwarding or dynamic port forwarding to access an Amazon EMR cluster web interface. Each option also has a few more options that we can use. Let's walk through these options, starting with local port forwarding. With the first option, we are going to set up an SSH tunnel to our cluster's main node using OpenSSH. For this video, I will access the Yarn Resource Manager interface that's hosted on port 8088. However, we can use the same process with other applications that are available to the cluster, including applications such as Hadoop NameNode or Spark History Server. The command syntax for this procedure is as follows. Type SSH to use OpenSSH. Use the I flag to specify the private key file. Use the N flag to forward ports. Use the L flag to specify a local port forwarding following the syntax on use local port, hostname, remote port. Finally, use the default Hadoop user and the master node public DNS. Now our tunnel is set up and we can view the interface by browsing to localhost 8157. With the second option, we'll set up an SSH tunnel to our cluster's main node using PuTTY. I'll access the Yarn Resource Manager interface hosted on port 8088. Remember, you can do this for any application that's available to the cluster. Let's open PuTTY and enter our connection string using the user Hadoop and our main node public DNS. Next, we expand the SSH options on the left pane and select the Auth menu. Here, let's browse our file system and select the SSH private key that we use to connect to our cluster. Next, select the Tunnels menu. Here, we'll configure our port forwarding connection. Enter an unused local port on source port and then our main node public DNS, followed by the port that we want to access, in this case, 8088. Finally, choose Add. PuTTY is now configured to access the web interface. Choose Open and browse to localhost 8157. Now, let's talk about dynamic port forwarding and the options that we have. We'll review all the available web interfaces on our EMR cluster. For this option, we must configure a SOX proxy on our browser. So let's talk about how we can do this on Firefox and Google Chrome. Before we configure our browser, we must configure a dynamic port forwarding tunnel from our local machine. We can do this with OpenSSH or PuTTY. The first step is to open a terminal and create the tunnel. The command syntax is as follows. Enter SSH to use OpenSSH. Use the I flag to specify your private key file. Use the N flag to forward ports. Use the D flag to specify your dynamic port forwarding port. Finally, use the default user and the host. The first step is to open PuTTY and enter our connection string using the user Hadoop and our main node public DNS. Next, expand the SSH options on the left pane and select the Auth menu. Here, we'll browse our file system and then select the SSH private key that we use to connect to our cluster. Next, select the Tunnels menu. Here, we'll configure a dynamic port forwarding connection. Enter an unused local port on source port, select Dynamic, and then choose Add. Now we have our dynamic port forwarding tunnel set on our local machine. 
our next step is to configure a browser with a SOX proxy. We must install the Foxy proxy extension to connect to our cluster web interfaces. To do so, visit the add-ons page, then search for Foxy proxy standard and add the extension to Firefox. Our next step is to configure Foxy proxy and set the local port that we configure for the tunnel. In this video, I am using 8157. We can get the configuration file from the Amazon EMR console. Save this configuration on a file named foxyproxysettings.xml. I already have this file available for the next steps. To configure Foxy Proxy, choose the extension and then select Options. On the left pane, select Import Settings. Now, under Foxy Proxy 6.x, select Import Settings and select the Foxy Proxy Settings.json configuration file that we saved earlier. You are prompted to overwrite. Choose OK. Finally, from the drop-down list, select Use Enable Proxies by Patterns and Order. Our proxy is now configured and ready to be used. For this demo, I can see the name node and the Young Resource Manager web interfaces. We must install the Switchy Omega extension to connect to our cluster web interfaces. To do this, visit the extensions page, search for Switchy Omega, and then add the extension to Chrome. Next, let's configure Switchy Omega. Open the extension. Then, select New Profile in the left pane. In the next screen, create a new profile named EMR Sox Proxy. Select PAC Profile, and then choose Create. Get the configuration for our PAC Profile from the Amazon EMR console, and then copy and paste it into this screen. Finally, choose Apply Changes on the left pane. On the Extension section, open Switchy Omega, and then select the EMR SOX Proxy Profile. Our proxy is now configured and ready to be used. For this demo, I can see the name node and the Yarn Resource Manager web interfaces. Now you know how to access the web interfaces hosted on an Amazon EMR cluster by using local port forwarding and dynamic port forwarding. Thanks for watching and happy cloud computing from all of us here at AWS. <laughs>